Inbuilt TV speakers are usually pretty lacklustre. They don't provide the hit in the bass for movies, the cloudy for TV, or the well-balanced sound for music listening. As such, many people opt to pick up a speaker system, whether it be a 2.1 set of speakers, a soundbar, or a surround setup. Many people will opt towards a soundbar to minimise visual intrusion that a conventional speaker system might bring, and while you get this more seamless integration, you lose the flexibility of speakers, and often because of the smaller drivers in a soundbar, the sound suffers as well. Today, we're looking at what Nakamichi is offering with the Shockwave Pro 7.1 soundbar system, priced at $399. This set comprises of a 45-inch soundbar, an 8-inch wireless sub, and two satellite speakers, so let's take a look at what Nakamichi has to offer. Now I'll preface by saying that I haven't had very much experience with soundbars, I have mainly used speakers. To get an idea for where this system is most suited, I tested it in two environments of different sizes to identify how it performed in each, and I'll assess both usability and sound. But before we get into that, let's take a look at each section of the Shockwave Pro. The centerpiece is the soundbar, with Nakamichi touting its 45 inch length and its 11 speaker drivers housed within it. The front has a plastic mesh finish and a small Nakamichi logo, as well as the IR receiver. On the top you have 5 clicky buttons to control power, source, demo playback and volume controls. On the back you have a brushed plastic finish with a wide selection of ports. We have the non-removable AC cable for 110 volt power only, meaning without a step down transformer this can only be used in countries with 110 volts, which is unfortunate, and I would have liked to see multiple voltages even if it is mainly aimed at the US market. There's a USB port for firmware updates, optical, digital and AUX for audio, as well as two HDMI inputs and one pass through. This is a great selection of inputs, accommodating for all sorts of setups. Really great stuff here. On the bottom are two rubber feet for grip, and on the sides you have these silver accents. Aesthetically, this is a mixed bag for me. While I like the black and silver colour palette, the design is too angular and just a bit bold for my preference. A more subtle design would have been of benefit. However, the same can't be said for the accompanying 8 inch wireless subwoofer. I love the design here, the silver looks great, and while it has those angular hints, it ties together nicely. I love the concept and the execution of this subwoofer. Having the wireless functionality means you can hide the subwoofer and rear speaker cables, and connecting the woofer and soundbar happens immediately and seamlessly. On the rear are the connections for the accompanying satellite speakers and the power switch. The only thing is because of the wireless nature, you can't use this subwoofer with any other system, which is unfortunate. I would have loved to see the option to use the sub in a wired mode to allow for more system expandability. The only other nitpick is that the sub doesn't seem to have a proper smart sleep mode, so when you've turned off the soundbar, the sub will still have a light flashing at the back. Overall though, I like the execution of the woofer. And finally, you have the two satellite speakers. These are pretty simple, they aren't very large or exceptional, but match well with the design of the system and have a pretty small footprint. The cable they use isn't the standard speaker wire, which could be annoying if you plan on using pre-existing cable runs for these, however, the cables are extremely long, so they'll fit in even very large areas. And the last thing is the accessories pack. In here you'll have all the needed cables, with AUX, optical, and a short HDMI cable included. Nice. The only complaint is that the HDMI cable is very short, so your source device will have to be very close to the soundbar. You also have velcro wraps for cable management, and mounting materials so that you can wall mount the soundbar and the satellite speakers. Pretty solid accessories, nice stuff Nakamichi. So, how's the system in use, and does it offer any advantages over a set of speakers? Well first, we'll look at one of the features I found most enjoyable, and that is Bluetooth. You can connect any Bluetooth capable device and use the Shockwave Pro with it, and I found myself using this way more than I thought I would. It's great to be able to sit down on the couch and play some music easily, or have some improved audio when watching something on your phone or your laptop. I really love having Bluetooth in a system like this, and if I was looking at spending my cash on a speaker system, Bluetooth would certainly be on my list now. The only drawback is that the audio quality is understandably degraded compared to HDMI, and I did encounter some breaking up of the signal occasionally, although hopefully that can be revised in firmware. Nakamichi also includes their own remote, which is interesting to say the least. They've attempted to innovate by changing the angle the remote is used at, intending for it to be used in a more vertical position. For me, I found that using it at this raised angle felt weird at first, and even once I got used to it, I didn't feel it provided an advantage over the traditional design. However, that wasn't the main issue that I had with this remote. The biggest thing was that the remote was inconsistent and unreliable. While it would mostly work if the sensor was directly lined up with the soundbar sensor, even at just a slight angle from sitting on another couch, it meant that the signal was just often not recognised. 
The only reason this was manageable was that you can see if the command is registered by the LEDs on the soundbar, however the remote made the entire system seem clunky. Having an inconsistent remote is something which is a really big issue when it's the primary means of interaction, and hopefully Nakamichi can fix it, as otherwise it detracts from the experience. Otherwise when the remote functions it's pretty decent, but not particularly exceptional. You have the basic controls as well as EQ presets, and you can also program the remote to control basic TV power and channel switching, which is nice. One of the big advantages I see for some users that might sell a soundbar over a set of speakers is the inputs. The Shockwave Pro has the ability to pass video and audio through, so in my case I can connect my computer via HDMI to the soundbar, and then also connect the projector to the soundbar. It will then pass the video through the PC, through the soundbar, and to the projector, which isn't something most speaker systems have the ability to perform. For many, this might not matter, but it'll be very useful for those who need it. So that covers most of the user experience, leaving only the sound. As always, this is the most subjective and the most difficult part to cover. And similar to the rest of the Shockwave Pro, this is once again a mixed bag. Before we start, there are a couple of big things to take into account. Firstly, you have to think about where you're going to be using this. I used this in both a small living room and a much larger and more open space in order to get an idea of how it suits different areas. Most of my reflections will be in regards to the large environment, as Nakamichi recommends this system for use in a medium to large open room, with a distance of about 3.5 metres between you and the soundbar, and I do tend to agree. So I'll first look at some positives. I did quite a bit of movie watching with the Shockwave Pro in my larger setting, and overall I was very impressed. The subwoofer performed very well, providing plenty of rumble which was great in movies for immersiveness, and managed to fill even a very large space well. In the smaller space the subwoofer got loud to the point of being overpowering, especially in bass centric movies. With the movie EQ preset, the rest of the system sounded pretty good as well, and the sound was pretty balanced between vocals and atmosphere, and overall it was a pretty enjoyable and full sound which I found myself pretty satisfied with. For watching most casual content, I found that especially in the larger environment, it was more than satisfactory, and volume was overall adequate. Nakamichi advertises up to 105 dB, and I believe them. For almost all content, I kept my volume at around 60 out of 150, and even in a large room, 150 was ear-shatteringly loud, so you'll have no issues with cranking the volume up. The Shockwave Pro is also one of two 5.1 systems to offer both the Dolby 5.1 DTS and Dolby Digital audio formats. However, I found that to my ears, I didn't hear much of a discernible difference even using supported content, of which there is only a very select amount. While it is nice to see, it's not a feature which would sway me. Once we moved past movies and TV and start to critically examine the sound, we start to hear some of the flaws however. The mid and high range are the parts that stand out most clearly to me, as they need quite some work. On the music EQ setting, I found that the high range was extremely piercing and harsh, not only leading to a more tinny sound, but also making high strings and vocals extremely fatiguing. Whether this is the fault of the speaker or the EQ preset is unbeknownst to me, as when I switched to the movie preset this was less of an issue, except that the high range thus became really muddy and lost clarity. It might be that with additional EQ tweaking these issues can be resolved, but currently for music listening I found that even in the larger environment it was just too harsh, and while certain sections could sound great, the weak sections really killed it. The last notes are on the surround sound and the environments that you should use this in. Using it in a small living room I just found it wasn't suited for that type of space. The Shockwave Pro really needs a larger space to excel, and in that smaller room the soundbar overpowered the sound and the balance was just off. That's not to say that it was perfect in a larger room either though. While the sound certainly opened up with space, I found that the rear speakers still didn't add that much to the sound and I didn't get that surround effect, with the subwoofer and the soundbar bearing the grunt of the work. Now for conclusions. The Nakamichi Shockwave Pro shows promise, with some great features and decent hardware, and the use of a wireless subwoofer is really great. Having the features of a soundbar is certainly appealing, and the system would work well for a large TV room where you don't want the front speakers visible. However, it's the small things where the shockwave falls flat, the remote needs an overhaul, and the sound definitely needs some tweaking. It shows promise, and with more work the shockwave pro could be a very solid contender, but as it is, more refinement is needed. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to leave a like and comment if you have any questions or feedback. I'm Aiden with Hardware Canucks, make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.